Hey guys, before we get started, just a few announcements. One, I'm gonna be needing a break. So after this video goes out, I'm gonna take about a week off from video production. Still streaming, still working on projects, just taking a break from videos until later in May. Secondly, for those of you who've been waiting on me to put out some homebrew yokai playable races in 5th ed D&D, I'm pleased to announce that in honor of today's video, my playable tanuki race book is live over on dmskill.com. Links in the description if you want to check that out. Thanks, guys! Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here! So almost a year ago, we threw together a little video that poked and prod around not only the cultural origins, but also the true intentions of Animal Crossing's greatest capitalist, Tom Nook. Coming to the conclusion that, yeah, Tom Nook seems like a good enough guy, but I still question some of his business practices giving us the, uh, illusion of a good deal. Something traditional Tanuki specialize in. And then a bunch of people like Jay Witz and Game Explain did roughly the same thing, talking about the cultural inspiration behind Tom Nook and did gangbusters with views. <laughs> Cause you know, it's not like we're jealous or anything like that. Hey, you leave Jay Witz alone. Boy's a treasure and a doll. Besides, Tom Nook's yokai origin only made up about a third of his video. The rest of it dealt with Tom Nook's canonical background and story within the game itself, which sparked a very interesting idea that today I want to tear into. In his video, Jay Witz reopens up a question a lot of Animal Crossing fans have been pondering about for a while now. What exactly is Tom Nook's relationship with the underhanded fox Crazy Red? And with Red's return to the franchise in Animal Crossing New Horizons, there's been a brand new flurry of interest on social media questioning and perceiving what exactly Tom Nook and Red's relationship was. From business partner to... yeah. But all things considered, though it's never mentioned directly, there's a lot of evidence in the various games of the franchise pointing to a massive financial falling out between Tom Nook and Red. Well, of course, but that's begging the question for folks out of the loop. Who's Red? Fair point. To put it simply, Crazy Red is a narrow-eyed, golden-furred fox, in fact, the only fox, within the Animal Crossing franchise, and this guy is living, breathing sleaze, scamming villagers into purchasing overpriced furniture and counterfeit art. He's essentially the sole proprietor of Animal Crossing's black market, taking very little effort in hiding that fact. He's also believed to have worked with another scummy villager, likely based off a trickster yokai, Lyle, aka Honma-san, a weasel, or possibly Kawauso otter, who, with Red's help, ran a wide-scale insurance scam against fraudulent art sales. Hey, this is a big deal when your primary way of earning income in this game is selling fruit and bugs. But most important of all, Red's Japanese name, Tsunekichi, derives from the animal slash yokai Kitsune, just as Tom Nook derives his Japanese name, Tanukichi, from Tanuki. And speaking of the guy, you're probably wondering at this point what in the world the connection is between Tom and Red. Well, if you didn't catch Jay Witt's video on Tom Nook, and if you didn't, I highly suggest you do, in Happy Home Designer, we discover that he had a business relationship that nearly ruined him. Tom Nook asks if we've ever worked with foxes and states that all foxes cannot be trusted, continuing with how he himself had worked with a fox once in his life, and never again. Not after the incident. Assuming that this incident was when his business partner betrayed him and ran off with all his money, another fact we learn in this game. And the only canonical fox villager we're aware of at this time is none other than Red. So why this bad blood and rivalry with Tom Nook and Red, of Tanuki and Kitsune? Is this merely an isolated event in a chill game about digging, fishing, and catching bugs? Or does this rivalry of capitalism stem from a much bigger story? Well, I mean, we wouldn't exactly have much of a video if it wasn't. But to really understand how deep and insane this rivalry goes, we gotta go back to the very beginning of these two titans of folklore all the way back to 720 AD. Something you gotta understand going in is that Tanuki and Kitsune are basically cousins when it comes to folklore. The mythology of what the Chinese referred to as Huri Jing, or fox spirits, made its way over to Japan somewhere between the 4th and 7th centuries, to which Japan adapted the concept of magical foxes into two categories, the Zenko good foxes that worked for Okami Inari, and the Yako foxes who were just jerks that sucked the life out of humans by turning into hot women. If you need more info on that, we've done far too many videos on the topic already, so check those out if you need to be caught up to speed. It was also about this time when Japan's second oldest historical text, the Nihon Choki, was completed around the 7th century. And what's interesting about this little tidbit is that the book mentions an odd little critter sharing many of the same qualities as the recently imported Kitsune, the Mujina, which was believed to be the Tanuki's ancestor. To cite one specific entry, quote, 35th year, spring, second month. 
In the country of Mutsu, Amujina turned into a human being and sang songs. Now this is where it gets a little weird, because while Kitsune, Tanuki, and Mujina have since become established individual folklore creatures in modern day, back in the 7th century, they all just kind of bled into each other. In ancient depictions, Mujina had several physical characteristics to Kitsune, while Tanuki back then were traditionally called Mujina. So, due to this confusion, the Tanuki eventually adapted a lot of the mythological concepts from the Mujina, who very likely got said concepts from the Kitsune after Japan imported magical fox lore from China at the same time as their oldest historical documents were being written. This all basically came to a head in the 1600s during the yokai boom of the Edo period. Books of folklore and art such as the Wakan Sansai Zue began giving Tanuki a much more individual identity away from Kitsune and Mujina. Whereas Kitsune were more refined and used their illusionary tricks for pure evil, Tanuki would use their illusionary abilities to simply make people look stupid and then laugh about it later. So, in a weird sort of way, Kitsune and Tanuki are basically estranged cousins, having somewhat the same roots and capabilities yet different ideals when using them which led them to an inevitable rivalry. This gives us a really interesting 7th century backdrop as to why Tom Nook and Red possibly came together as business partners and then fell apart. Both Tom and Red are interested in making money, that much is obvious, and neither of these two seem to do without a little bit of manipulation. Likewise did both Tanuki and Kitsune use illusionary techniques to turn bones and leaves into gold and jewels in order to swindle people out of income. But while Tom seemingly only uses just a dash of fast talk to sell his products and houses, Red straight up grifts his customers into buying counterfeit items. It's like, sure, Tom Nook is a little crooked in his sales pitch, but at least you get an actual functioning product. With Red, you're literally being sold a lie. Which in turn mirrors how Tanuki and Kitsune were viewed in folklore, with Kitsune being unbelievably conniving and evil with their trickery, while Tanuki would just fool people but never had any true malicious intent. But this begs the question, why did Tom and Red fall out? Why did Red betray Tom, and what does it all have to do with centuries-old folklore? Well, considering Tom Nook isn't a heartless monster when it comes to business, it's possible that Red either got tired of Tom not letting him go all out with his tricks, or decided to take advantage of what was left of Tom Nook's good nature. And yeah, Tom Nook was and is good-natured if Sable's to be believed. But there's another angle to all this, something that Jay Woods actually opens the door to but never really fleshes out. Watch. Japanese media has the two animals working together, although quite a lot of it has them actually fighting against each other. Kitsune are often painted as more magically powerful and pure evil than the Tanuki, but in head-to-head -head battles and stories, they're often defeated by the more chaotic-leaning and prank-loving raccoon dogs. Uh, Jay, what's my dude? What you just described is a centuries-old rivalry known as the Kori no Tatakai, literally the Battle of Kitsune and Tanuki. To explain, remember how for a long time Tanuki and Kitsune were seen as almost the same thing? That's what this word, Kori, represents. It's the literal smashing together of the kanji for Kitsune and the kanji for Tanuki, and this was used a lot during the 7th century. One such instance comes from the Zokuto Ritsu, or laws concerning robbers, warning against the practice of using smoke to flush out Kori from their dens and graveyards. But anyway, I digress. Getting back to the topic at hand, the Kori no Tatakai on average was little more than a transform off, similar to Disney's Wizard Duel, but no one was horribly murdered. But what does this have to do with Tom Nook and Red? Apples and oranges, right? Well, it was around the 1650s that the Kori no Tatakai took a much darker turn. Inner Danzan Budo Danuki. Uh, sorry guys, one quick correction. Throughout the remainder of this video, I keep calling this lad's name wrong. It's not Danzan Budo, it's Danzaburo. Part of it's my dumb dyslexia not seeing letters sometimes, and this stupid, stupid kanji which is pronounced San, Zan, or Mitsu, but in this case it's Za for some reason, got me all mixed up. So apologies going in, I just couldn't fix it in post. One of the three legendary Tanuki of Japan alongside Yashima Hage Tanuki and Kinsho Tanuki, and the supreme commander of the Tanuki of Sado Island. Legend has it that under the guise of a fur trader bringing in Tanuki to breed on the island for hunting, Danzan Budo in truth had traveled to Sado Island just off Niigata Prefecture to find a new home for himself and his Tanuki kin, fleeing the mainland of Japan to get away from the Tanuki's modern predator, the domestic dog, but curiously enough, to get the absolute heck away from Kitsune. Danzan Budo hated Kitsune. Though folklore never explains why, Danzan kept the chip on his shoulder a mile long against foxes. And if that doesn't already sound like another Tanuki we know, consider this. Danzan brought his kid to Sado to make a fresh start, right? Well, what did Tom Nook do in New Horizons? 
Sell an island getaway package for villagers, sure, but Tom actually stays on that island with you and the other villagers, bringing along his two apprentices and kin, Timmy and Tommy, essentially becoming the leader of the island and bringing his clan of Tanuki along just like Danzan. Because, let's be real here, gang, who do we go to to buy and expand our house, to authorize construction of bridges and inclines, and who authorizes the movement of island buildings? Yeah, Tom Nook. Everything goes through him. Legend also cites that Danzan Budo was a bit of a folk hero to the people of Sado. According to Kyoto Baki's In Sekizashi, Danzan Budo was said to reclaim lost treasures from fields, valleys, and destroyed homes due to the war, and in turn, he would loan those riches out to the local fishermen who had been struggling to just get by. And the money that Danzan Budo lent was real gold, an action which is exponentially unusual for a tanuki who would be more than inclined to transform leaves into gold. However, Danzan Budo refused to be taken advantage of. If his debtors never paid up, the loan stopped. Well, that sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Tom Lung may have pushed loans on us for housing pretty hard in past games, but what he loans to the player is a real, tangible thing, usually in the form of a home. It's not all smoke and mirrors counterfeits like Red. And just like Danzan, Nook never charged a penny of interest, nor did he give the player a deadline to pay up. But when Tom gives out a loan, that's it. Nothing else was loaned until the first loan was paid up. Just like Danzan Budo, Tom Nook refused to be taken advantage of and requires his debtors to be responsible. In his own words, paying one's debt is important. If I must be villainized in my pursuit of teaching, then so be it. Yeah, I think I remember hearing about something like this over on the Game Explained video. But I suppose then that just leaves one more question. How did Danzan Budo deal with foxes trying to get in on his island? And what does it have to do with Tom Nook and Red? Well, I admit this is a bit of speculation, but check this out. There are two major folk stories that explains the lengths that Danzan Budo went through to keep foxes off of Sado Island. In one story, while transformed as a human, a kitsune appeared before Danzan and asked to be taken to Sado in order to scout for a new home for their clan of foxes. Danzan agreed, but only if the kitsune would transform into a jacket as a disguise to prevent suspicion when they arrived, which the kitsune acquiesced. Calmly, Danzan began oaring his boat out to sea. But about halfway out into the middle of the ocean, whistling carefree, Danzan took off the jacket of a fox and straight up yeeted it into the water, leaving the kitsune to drown. The second story involves Danzan Budo meeting a powerful kitsune near Futatsu Iwa on Sado Island. Danzan hadn't let a single kitsune into Sado before, and he certainly wasn't going to start now. Upon seeing the cretin, Danzan issued a challenge of transformation, stating that while the kitsune may be a master where he's from, Danzan's skill was equal to no other, boasting that he could transform into an entire daimyo procession. The kitsune scoffed and told Danzan Budo to show him what he could do, after which Danzo disappeared over the horizon and sure enough, a daimyo's procession came, complete with armored guards, flag bearers, and a large palican where the daimyo would ride. In complete disbelief, the kitsune rushed over and jumped on top of the palican to test the illusion. Unfortunately for the kitsune though, this was an actual daimyo procession, and the fox was cut to ribbons in seconds. Witnessing the event from the corner of his eye, Danzan Budo merely walked away whistling. Dang! I know, right? The last thing that Danzan Budo was going to allow was a kitsune to fraternize on his island. So, when it comes to Tom Nook's island that we have the pleasure of landscaping, where's old Crazy Red? out on a trawler boat off the shore far to the north where he could hide. See, just like the kitsune at Futatsu Iwa, Red made his appearance on the island, but that wasn't gonna last. In the long term, Red had to set up his business offshore. Why does that matter? Because in every other iteration of the game, Tom Nook was just a businessman, either selling goods in a shop or acting as a real estate agent. And in each installment of the game, Red had his own tent in the town itself. But in New Horizons, Tom Nook owns the island. He's simply selling the package experience to the player and the other villager animals in game. And it's very, very clear that he's not going to allow Red to set up his deceitful shop on his land. Thus, Red's forced to the far edge of the map offshore, Nary taking another step into the island after originally talking with the player for the first time. Look, I get that all these connections may very well be purely coincidental. Tom Nook being inspired by folklore legend Danzan Budo, the Nooklings representing the clan that Danzan protects on their new paradise island, Tom Nook and Red's hated rivalry mirroring Danzan's hatred of Kitsune, but the estranged relationship between Tanuki and Kitsune has been established in Japan for over a thousand years, with references to this relationship appearing in products from Japan today. We know for a fact that Nintendo loves borrowing its domestic culture for its games, so who's to say that that's not happening here? Oh, that reminds me. 
So I've been getting a lot, and I mean a lot, of requests to create homebrew playable yokai races in Dungeons & Dragons. Well gang, I'm happy to announce that in theme with today's video, my first ever yokai race, the Tanuki, is live over on DMSkill.com. The exact same race that I play in in the shadows we cast over on Colonel Chero's Twitch every Thursday. The book not only contains a balanced stat block of happy-go-lucky pranksters for 5th ed, but it also has a ton of Tanuki folklore from all over Japan. So, if you're interested, head on over to Dungeon Master's Guild to get your copy. Proceeds go to help keeping these videos going. But if you want to learn even more about fantastic folklore from Japan and beyond as told through video games, anime, and movies, sub up, get notified, and check in on the channel once in a while because we upload nearly weekly. Though this week I need to take a break like I said earlier. But I'll be back with even more cultural analysis later on in May. But until then everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.